Welcome to this year's recording from the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, the SABCS, which is the largest breast cancer conference in the world. My name is Alexandra von Korf and uh, on behalf of Mama Mia and Patients Today, I warmly welcome you and Professor Till from Frankfurt, who is joining me today to run us through the newest studies. Would you quickly introduce yourself, Mark? Yes, of course, Alex. So my name is Mark Till. I'm heading a department of gynecology and gynecologic oncology at the Agapis and Marcus Hospital in Frankfurt, focusing on, um, on breast cancer and, uh, and gynecologic malignancies. So therefore, we always have to attend the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. So this is um, a very, a very, very important and very exciting um, Congress. Um, we had more than 10,000 attendees um, last year. Uh, so it was uh, held in December um, last year, uh, and and then of course very very um, somewhat difficult to to find uh, what are the highlights of the highlights and uh, and Alex and maybe um, we did a lot of discussion in the end uh, to to make our choice. So in, in this take um, we want not to talk about systemic therapy. I want to uh, talk about surgery, but before that um, you have to read this uh, disclaimer. And um, and my disclosures, and then we talk about a yeah, I mean practice changing um, study, um, the Enzima study. So this was a study conducted in Germany. The, our Austrian colleagues um, um, participated in the trial. Um, but uh, this is an original German study, a German idea, Toral Freimer from the University of Rostock and Bernd Gerber from the same university did a really nice job um, following this idea of um, de-escalation in surgery. And um, the story was, um, am I able to um, avoid center node biopsy in a patient population? Uh, we will talk about later on. So um, for whom is this stu study relevant? Um, it's relevant for everyone who has to undergo a sentinel biopsy. And you know that once you go in the OR, then the tumor has to be resected out of the breast. So there's a breast conserving surgery or mastectomy when the breast, breast has to be removed. And uh, if you have clinically node, a clinically node negative situation, that means you have no involvement in the axial lymph nodes. Um, then you are defined as clinically node negative, then uh, you have been able to participate in the trial. And um, the trial started um, really a couple of years ago where we are, where we are, where we had, yeah, where we are, where we were struggling about, um, is this um, something, uh, are we brave enough to do that? So therefore, um, this was um, a very important to have this trial done and uh, all our participation in the trial. So this is a study design, more than 5,000 or nearly 5,000 patients, sorry, um, that um, have been conducted for uh, the participation. And um, you see that uh, around 1,000 patients um, had no central node lymph node biopsy. The rest had a central lymph node biopsy and, um, and all of them underwent breast conserving surgery. There was a study, uh, the SOUND study, um, published last year. Um, with similar results, um, you see in a couple of seconds. So therefore, this is now the second study um, for the de-escalation in uh, breast conserving surgery and the avoidance of sentinel biopsy. So this is the story. No sentinel biopsy or sentinel biopsy. So does this impact um, the disease-free or invasive disease-free survival so does this has an impact to survival of our patients and this is the uh, these are the results and you see there that the two lines are, are really going um so so nearby that um that there is no difference and um the pink line is the no central lymph node line and the gray line is the central line and there is no significant difference um whatever you did um regarding this um surgical intervention um, if we took, yeah, if we take a closer look to the different um, survival endpoints, um, 
Then you may see that in the second line, for example, relapses in axial lymph nodes, you have in a no central lymph node 1% versus in a central lymph node biopsy arm 0.3%. But um, um, when we see the number of patients, then there is no difference. Um, we have just more patients um, in the central lymph node biopsy arm. So this is nothing um, that adds any information regarding the higher risk of recurrence. So this is something that is really um, without any significant difference regarding the both subgroups. And then for the overall survival, uh, we do see, again, no difference. So survival rate um, at five years for the central node biopsy arm, 96.9, and for the node central node biopsy arm, 98.2%. So there is no difference. And now comes the, the big question, Alex. This is your question in the end. So where is the patient population? So who deserves um, and the avoidance of... Um... Well, yeah, if, you, if we think about it, I mean, it, it, in the past, they just used to remove all the lymph nodes. Yes. yes. Now we have gone to, okay, there's the sentinel lymph node that is connected directly to the breast, to the tumor. And um, this is then being removed. And the story was always, we cannot say if, if it is um, diseased, this lymph node, until, or for sure, until the patho patho lo pathologist has opened the lymph node and looked into it. So this is now, from my point of view, if we can prove that it is not necessary to open it and have a look, then that would be revolutionary because you have long-term side effects with every lymph node that is being removed again. Again, I do disagree Then you say, oh, there's no difference. There is a difference, you know, in the numbers. It always depends what side of the statistics you're, you're standing on, right? Yeah, but if we, if, <laughs> if, if we see the... Um, the tendency, I know, I know. The number, the percentage of events, uh, I mean, yeah. is it 10.9 or is it 10.3%? So... I think there is no difference. The only, the only thing you may struggle about is: um, Do I miss positive lymph nodes if I don't go for a central biopsy? You say so. Clinically, uh, my patient has no nodal involvement. All right, but in the sound study, sixteen percent of these patients had lymph node metastasis. So do I have concerns right now to miss these lymph nodes regarding my treatment with decision? No, because I don't see any difference regarding overall survival. Mm -hmm. so do you want to undergo um, a surgical intervention without gaining benefit regarding your overall survival? I don't think so. Yeah. Then we do have... Um, systemic therapy options. So once you have a positive lymph node, then you may benefit from, for example, CDK46 inhibitor or chemotherapy later on. And, and um, so is this something um, that will influence my treatment decision regarding the sending node uh, biopsy or not? But if I, and this was is uh, your question, so, and this is the answer, if I, um, look to the to the population where where the um where i'm able to avoid sentinel node biopsy data coming from that study then these are the patients with an age of more than 50 of course clinical node negative so this is something we said already tumor size up to two centimeters so 2.1 centimeters so this is not feasible so these are the patients with a small tumor um, patients with um, low or moderate aggressiveness, so grading one, grading two, but no grade three, mm -hmm. and hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative, so no triple negatives, no HER2 positives, it's the hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative disease. And then in this population, uh, we are able to um, avoid a sentinel biopsy. And in this population, you may not get any benefit out of... Um, a positive lymph node that is not found because you you don't um, perform this intervention of a send node biopsy. So this is something um, that sounds a bit complicated, but we have to um, take into account the 
uh, the data out of the treatment studies. And this is the reason why I'm right. Um, what does this mean every day uh, that we are much more critical in the future um, mm. to indicate cellular biopsy? And um, we will more often retain from this procedure um, and um, yeah, in, in, in this subgroup. So I, I wouldn't say um, let's do it for everyone. Mm -hmm. I would always say um, let's figure out patient by patient by patient. But this yeah. will be in the guidelines and, um, and we will, uh, of course, follow the guidelines because we are designing the guidelines. And I think in the future um, we will um, avoid a single biopsy much more often than, than we did yet. But it's it's good that you emphasize that this is for a certain population and it's on a case by case basis, you know, that people just don't go, oh, we don't do this anymore. I've heard that you don't need to remove them anymore. I don't want it. It's on a case by case, but it's something you can take with you to your doctor to discuss. And uh, that's that's why we thought this was uh, so important and less chemotherapy if it's not necessary, less operations if it's not necessary or other operations if it's necessary. So uh, I think we've taken away a lot of... Uh, practice changing results from San Antonio? Do you see this like this? Yeah, definitely practice changing, um, bothering us in, in, in different in different ways, our standard operation procedures, how to how to treat patients. So this is uh, really, uh, has to be really rewritten. And um, this is something that we are doing at the moment um, for the patients. So, I mean, great news, um, shorter time in UR, um, a maximal reduction of lymphedema, of course, um, despite we just performing central biopsy, as you said. So uh, years ago, we performed axillary node dissection. So um, again, um, one step further regarding de-escalation. Um, and um, yeah, we're really happy to de-escalate. But of course, we have to figure out always um, to do this in a very wise manner. Yeah, mm -hmm. not to do it like, hey, here we go um for everyone so one size fits all i think this is the lesson we learned um this is nothing we want to perform um, we did this in the past and we don't want to perform it in the future yeah practice changing perfect thank you yeah that was our take uh, from the uh the, the last take from the san antonio breast cancer symposium and uh i can thank you only again for always taking your time to explain and go through all these uh, studies by study and uh, translating it in an everyday language. So um, I thank you. Anybody, if you have any further questions, do contact us and uh, we have the written summaries for download and uh, you can download the presentations as well. So thank you and see you at the next conference.